Hello, folks. I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about Bernoulli's principle. Our objectives are going to be to understand how Bernoulli's principle describes the conservation of energy in fluid flow and to apply Bernoulli's principle to fluids in motion. So, in general, Bernoulli's principle says that fluids moving at higher velocities lead to lower pressures, while fluids moving at lower velocities lead to higher pressures. An example where you can see this has to do with the airplane wing. If we were to draw a wing of an airplane, probably something kind of close to this shape, as the air goes over top of it, it has to travel a further distance than the air that goes below it. It has a longer path, therefore it's going faster. Since it's going faster, we have a longer path, therefore we have a higher velocity, therefore we get a lower pressure on top of the wing. Below the wing, we have a shorter path, so we get a lower velocity and therefore a higher pressure. Now, because we've got a higher pressure down here below the wing and a lower pressure above the wing, we end up with some force upwards. We get some amount of lift. Now, notice that this isn't the only component of lift, but it partially explains the shape of wings in airplanes. We could also take a look at what's known as a venturi pump. A venturi pump has a fluid going through it and it constricts in the middle. Where it constricts, we get faster fluid flow by our continuity equation. And if it's moving faster, we must have lower pressure. Because we have lower pressure here, we end up with some pumping action. The lower pressure actually acts as a suction to pull fluids up. And you can oftentimes find these used as backup sump pumps in basements. If the electricity goes out and your basement starts to get more and more water in it, a float will trip, causing water pressure to run through a pipe like this. As it constricts, it goes faster, creates a vacuum, creates an area of lower pressure, and can suck the water up from the, uh, from the drain underneath the floor and pump it out before it ever has a chance to flood your basement. You can also find this principle used in carburetors, um, it's used in sailboats, uh, gas delivery systems, quite commonly used and very, very simple. No moving parts. So Bernoulli's equation itself relates the pressure, velocity, and height of a liquid in a tube at various points. What we have is the pressure at a point in the tube plus half the density of the fluid times the square of its velocity plus the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times the depth of the fluid at that point is constant. It must be the same at another point in the, uh, in the pipe or whatever you're talking about in this sort of system. And notice how closely this matches our conservation of energy. One half rho v squared, kind of like one half mv squared for kinetic energy. Rho gy, pretty similar to mgh, just using density instead of mass. So this is really another way of stating the law of conservation of energy, but for now we're talking about conservation of energy as applied to fluid flow. So let's see if we can't apply this to solve a couple problems. Water sits in a large jug at a height of 0.2 meters above the spigot. What is the pressure on the spigot and with what velocity will the water leave the spigot when the spigot is opened? Well, the first thing we have to realize is as we look here, P1 and P2 are both open to atmosphere. So P1 equals P2, which is atmospheric pressure. So when I write Bernoulli's equation, P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GY1 equals P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho g y2. Right away, if p1 and p2 are equal, we can subtract them both out, and that simplifies our equation. Now, also note here at the top of the jug, the velocity of our fluid is approximately zero. So if that's the case, that term will become zero, and we're left with a slightly simpler problem. Now, in the rest of our problem, notice we have density of the fluid, density of the fluid, density of the fluid. 
our fluid's the same, has the same density throughout the problem, so we can divide out our rows. What that leaves us with then is if I do a little bit, bit of rearrangement for this, we get, let's see, we have gy1 oops, is equal to 1 half v2 squared plus gy2. Or if we're solving for v2 squared, v2 squared is going to be equal to 2 times the quantity well, we can pull the g out and say that that's 2g times y1 minus y2. Or in this case, 2 times the acceleration due to gravity, about 10 meters per second squared, times y1, which we said was 0.2 meters, minus y2, 0. So 10 times 0.2 is 2 times 2 gives us 4. Therefore, if v2 squared equals 4, I take the square root of both sides and find that v2 is equal to 2 meters per second. The velocity coming out of the spigot down here on the bottom, 2 meters per second. And as you look at this, we've got a very important result embedded in here. Right there. V2 is going to be equal to the square root of 2g times y1 minus y2. And that result is actually known as Torricelli's theorem. All right, let's take a look at another problem with gauge pressure. Water flows through a large diameter pipe at point A before being constricted into a smaller diameter pipe at point B. How does the gauge pressure compare at points A and B? Well, it's, it must be going faster at B due to the continuity equation, smaller diameter, faster flow, and if it's going faster, it has lower pressure. So A must have a higher pressure than B. Let's take a look at another one, the shower pressure. A water main of area 0 0.003 square meters at ground level flows at 2 meters per second into Kate's house. At the second floor shower head, 5 meters above ground level, the pipe has an area of 0 0.001 meter square. Find the velocity of the water in the pipe, as well as the gauge pressure, just prior to the shower head, if the water main's pressure gauge reads two atmospheres. So I'm going to start by drawing a bit of a diagram here. It looks to me like we've got water coming in in a pipe that's at about, if we put a gauge on here, about two atmospheres. And at this point, it's 0 .003 square meters in area. Now it runs a little distance probably comes up a little bit into the house, constricts, and at this point it's 0 .001 square meter in area, and this height difference is 5 meters. Oh, and we know over here that the velocity is 2 meters per second. So, find the velocity of the water in the pipe. Well, to do that I'm going to use the continuity equation for fluids. Start by saying that A1V1 equals a2 v2 or in this case v2 the velocity up here is just going to be a1 over a2 times v1 or 0 0.003 over 0 0.001 times 2 meters per second or 3 times 2 6 meters per second so there's the velocity of the water in the pipe now for gauge pressure we're going to have to go to Bernoulli's equation. P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GY1 equals P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho GY2. Well, if we call this level ground or zero, this term will go away. That becomes zero. Now when I go to do this, I can start plugging in my values, P1, P2. Over here, at this point, we know the pressure is two atmospheres, so let's call that roughly 200,000 pascals for P1, plus one half rho for fresh water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times V1 squared, that's just going to be two squared, must equal P2 plus one half Rho again, 1,000. V2 is going to be 6 
we just found that up here, 6 meters per second squared, plus rho 1000 g 10 times y2, 5. Now this becomes an exercise in algebra. 200,000 pascals plus 4 times 1,000, 4,000 plus 1 half is going to be 2,000 equals P2 plus 6 squared is 36. Half of that is 18 times 1,000. So 18,000 plus 10,000 times 5 is 50,000. Therefore, we can solve for P2 and say that P2 is going to be 202,000 minus 68,000, or about 134,000 pascals, or around 1.34 atmospheres. Applying the continuity equation for fluids and the Bernoulli equation. All right, let's take a look at a water fountain problem. Sandy is designing a water fountain for her front yard. She would like the fountain to spray to a height of 10 meters. What gauge pressure must her water pump develop? All right, well, a picture of what we're doing here is we have some pressure developed by her water pump. We don't know what that needs to be, but then the water is going to come over, flow up, and at that point, we really want our water to come up to a height of about 10 meters. That's a pretty serious uh, water fountain. All right, well, let's start here with Bernoulli's equation again. P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho GY1 must equal P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared plus rho GY2, where this is area 1, this is area 2. Well, right away over here in the pump, velocity can be zero, and we'll call our height zero. On the right-hand side, when y2 gets to 10 meters, that's where the velocity is going to be zero at its highest point. So velocity there is zero. So we've simplified our equation to p1 equals p2 plus rho g y2. Now, in this case, P2 is atmospheric pressure, so that's going to be 100,000 pascals plus rho GY2. Well, rho is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, density of fresh water, G, 10 meters per second squared, and Y2, 10 meters, so 1,000 times 10, 10,000 times 10, 100,000. P2 must equal 200,000, pardon me, P1 must equal 200 thousand pascals. But if that's the case, then we have 200,000 pascals is our total pressure. That's P0 plus rho GH, where P0 is atmospheric pressure, or 100,000 pascals. Rho GH is our gauge pressure. That must be 100,000 pascals. So the gauge pressure that we're after is 100,000 pascals to give us a total absolute pressure of, of 200,000 pascals to make the water shoot up to a height of 10 meters. Let's take a look at one more problem. A water cistern is elevated 15 meters above the ground and it feeds a pipe that terminates horizontally 5 meters above the ground as shown. With what velocity will the water leave the pipe, and how far from the end of the pipe will the water strike the ground? Well, let's take this piece by piece. With what velocity will the water leave the pipe? That sounds like a Bernoulli's equation sort of problem. Let's call this area 1, and that's region 2. So P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared plus rho g y1 must equal p2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared plus rho g y2. And we can do a couple simplifications again. p1 and p2 are both open to atmosphere, so those we can subtract out. v1, let's assume that's pretty close to 0, so that term will go away. And over here at this point, 
Well, instead of looking at the difference of 15 meters and 5 meters, let's just say that we are at a height here of 0 and a height here of 10 meters. If we do that, then this term, y2, is 0, and that goes away. Now, we've got rho g y1, where y1 is going to be 10 meters, the height of our region 1 above region 2, and v2 is what we're looking for. So, rho 1,000 times g 10 times y1 10 must equal 1 half times rho 1,000 times v2 squared. Or, solving that, v2 squared must equal 200. Therefore, v2 would equal the square root of that, or about 14.1 meters per second. All right, so we've got the velocity that the water leaves the pipe. Now to see how far from the end of the pipe it'll strike the ground, well, that's kind of a, uh, that's a projectile motion problem. To do that, we're going to look at this as if we have a particle that's leaving the pipe horizontally, a horizontally launched projectile from five meters above the ground. So let's start with our kinematic equations. Let's look vertically first. Vertically, v initial, or v zero, will be zero. We don't know v final. Delta y will be five meters. A y, 10 meters per second squared, assuming we're calling down the positive direction and we don't know the time. But we can solve for that fairly easily using delta y equals the initial y t plus one half a y t squared. That term zero, so delta y equals one half a y t squared, or t equals two delta y over a square root, which is two times five over a 10 square root, which is one second. All right, now let's go and see how far it goes. Horizontally, we know that the velocity coming out of the pipe, which is going to remain constant, the velocity in the x direction is 14.1 meters per second. Our time in the air is one second. Therefore, our distance, or delta x, from the end of the pipe will be vx times t, 14.1 times 1 is just going to be 14.1 meters. All right, hopefully that gets you a great start with Bernoulli's principle and applications of Bernoulli's equation along with the continuity equation for fluids. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.